Hey folks, this is Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook, and today I'm going to share with you 10 things that I think teachers need to know about the new Google Sites. So not too long ago, uh, Google did this whole upgrade to their, their Google Sli Sites product. And to be totally honest, when I've had any interaction with Google Sites in the past, with the old Google Sites, I would actually encourage people not to use it. Um, I know for a long time I used uh, a website creator called Weebly. There are other ones that are that are similar to that, and that's where I always pointed people in the past. Until Google just recently updated Google Sites and has made it much more responsive. It's prettier. It's easier to use, and so this is the this is a, a product that I actually feel comfortable recommending to people now so I want to take you on a quick tour of 10 things that I think that teachers need to know about the new Google sites and so here's number one that you can click and then drag content wherever you want and this makes things really easy so if we come up here to the top right hand corner here you can see some of the basic things that you can add and so one of them is just a text box so I'm gonna click on this button right here and you'll notice that a text box appears right here if you want to add an image you can click there and we can do a quick search and so let's say we're doing something about Chromebooks and we find a picture of a Chromebook and we hit select now that picture is right in there and now watch this if we decide that we want to take our text box and we want to move it under the picture of the Chromebook we just click on the little dots and move it you see the blue line right there is where it's gonna go and now we can basically drag and drop things onto the page kind of wherever we want to to some extent from top to bottom which makes things super easy so that's number one number two is if you're creating a site and you want other people to work on it with you it's really easy to share it to let others edit it and so you've got this button right up here that says add editors and so if you're not the only one who's going to be working on this you can invite other people with um, their email address here you can also give a link to them so that they can click and come in and work on that site you'll want to change your editing permissions this is just like using Google Docs or Google Slides or whatever so it can be anyone with the link has access and then they can edit it so if we do that and we provide this link then pretty much anybody who has that link can come in and edit or you can just add specific people by putting their email address here and they'll show up right there so that's one thing that's nice is that if you've got a site that you want either just a couple people or a group of people to work on you can give them permission to do that really easy number three has to do with themes and so if you're not much of a design person you don't have to worry because Google has that taken care of for you and so you can change the theme just as simply as clicking on one of the themes over here and so you can see how they all kind of look different it's really easy to to update that to to make it look a little more the way that you want so that's that's one nice quick thing that they've included number four that I want to show you has to do with embedding things and so you can see where it says Google embeds right here it makes it really really easy to add a YouTube video a Google Calendar or a Google map to your site so let's say that you want to add a map of your let's say of where your school is so if we click on that we're gonna hit allow here and you know what let's do this let's just zoom on down I'm in the United States in Indiana and if we can get this here we go so if we come over here there's Indianapolis the capital of Indiana of course and so let's say we wanna we're gonna zoom it down right here and we're gonna drop a place mark right there let's say that that happens to be where the school is and if I hit select now watch what it's gonna do it drops in this map and it shows the location right there so if you wanna create a map to a specific spot and it's a responsive map so what that means is that if somebody pulls this up they can move around on it they can zoom in they can zoom out they can get directions all sorts of stuff like that so adding YouTube videos adding calendars you can even add a calendar from your um, Google Classroom if it has a calendar of your assignments uh, that's all stuff that you can stick on your site so that's really nice 
Number five, one thing that I really like about this is that it incorporates what's called responsive design. Responsive design is what makes a site look good on a computer versus on a mobile device, like on a tablet or a smartphone. And so I found this site, it's at stegel.com that talks about Google Sites and how it's got responsive design. So these are some of the things that's kind of nice about it, is that it has intelligent image re resizing, dynamic font size, so it will change the size of your pictures and your fonts to look good on the web. And so you've got you've got all of these different things that are that are nice about responsive design that they've included in the new Google site. So even if you're not big into web design, you don't totally understand all of that, at least you know that if you create a site that students or parents or whoever are going to be able to see it well on a mobile device. Let's go on to number six, which is that you can add Google files like docs, slides, sheets, forms, and charts all right onto your site really easily. Now this is sort of a big deal. So let's click on slides for example. I'm going to take the sketch noting for beginners slide presentation done by Sylvia Duckworth who's an awesome resource as far as sketch noting goes. And this is something that she she created a while back. But if I want to drop this on here, you see how easy it was to put this slide presentation. Same thing with a document. And it just embeds it right on there so that you can see it. Now here's the great thing is that if you don't want to come into sites to update your website, basically all you have to do is just update that slide presentation or that document or whatever it is that you drop onto your page. And then look at this, we can of course resize it too. So if we want to make this bigger and easier to see. And then if you update this file, it's going to update immediately onto your site too, or pretty close to immediately anyway. So that's another way to be able to update a site really easily without having to come in and tinker in Google Sites. So if you have, let's say you have a list of assignments or a you know, classroom management plan that you want to put on your site, and if it gets updated on the document, it automatically gets updated on the site too. So that's a, that's a really nice feature, I think is the ability to add those those constantly updatable Google files. So number seven is actually something that the new Google Sites does not have. I know some people aren't super happy about the way that Google Sites has been, um, has been updated because at least as of this recording right now, you don't have this thing called the cabinet. Oh, that's not the right page, hang on a second. Okay, you don't have this thing called the cabinet. So what you used to be able to do was you used to be able to insert a page and there was a page called the cabinet that would show you all of the files that you had used um, in your site. And they don't have that anymore. Uh, now, will they update the new Google Sites eventually with that? Possibly. We, we're not, we never know. Um, the other thing is that you used to be able to share pages privately and give permissions for per page or per site to specific people. And the new Google Sites just doesn't have that ability yet. Um, if you hit the publish button, so you can publish it to the web and you've got your site location, but you can't specify who can see. So, if that's the kind of thing that you need, for a while anyway, you can still access the old Google Sites and maybe by the time that the old Google Sites goes away, the new Google Sites will have that functionality. So that's one thing to know. Okay, so the last three of these, I promised 10, and so the last three of these are things that I think that we can do with Google Sites. And so I'm going to take you over to another page here. That is another quick thing that is really nice about Google Sites is that it allows you to organize your information by pages. And so you create different web pages and then you're able to kind of swap between those. You can see the tabs up here with my different pages. I've just got a home page and I've got the ways to use Google Sites that I'm going to go over with you here real quick. Okay. so. Number eight on my list, I guess it's number one here, but overall number eight is uh, to create project websites, not just projects. So we're always looking for, or at least we might be looking for ways for students to have kind of like an authentic audience where if they create something and they want to share it with more than just the teacher or more than just the class, this is a way to take that project and kind of like show it to the world is to create it on a site like this. So if they've gathered some information, come up with some ideas, done something creative, and they want more people to see it than just who they have in the class, if they put it on a Google site and then publish it, 
anybody that they share that that site with is going to be able to see it. So it could be parents, it could be people in the community, or even go bigger than that. All right, so number nine on my overall list here is to create a parent portal. So this is a really easy way to keep parents kind of in the loop, in the know with what's going on in class. And so if you create a parent portal, it could have contact information. You could list some of the things that you're doing in your class. You could embed your Google Classroom calendar so that parents know what is going on, what assignments are out there. Um, you could even put in, according to your, your school's policy on sharing photos and videos, you can even put photos and videos of what's going on in your class too. And so the last one here, this is number 10 on the, the whole list, is to create a video repository. Now since if we come over here on insert and we look at YouTube, we can insert YouTube videos really easily. Just think about if you had a site that had videos that showed common things that students struggle with. And if they were at home and they're going, oh, I just can't remember how to do this. If you've gone and found some videos out on YouTube that kind of walk them through that step by step and they have this as a resource that they could access at home or they could access while they're at school working on, on your work, um, this keeps them from having to come back to you every time to get that, that little bit of reteaching. And so having a video repository where you can just stick all these videos and you can say, hey, go to the site and there's a video on this. That's really easy for, for kids. It's also for parents. If they're, if they're helping students with their, their work, then if parents know how you've taught something or if they need a quick refresher on it, then that video repository can definitely help. So all in all, really like where they're going here with Google Sites. And even though it doesn't have all of the features that the old Google Sites had, I think we're heading in the right direction here. And this is something that can really, really be useful, I think, to parents and students. So hope this is useful to you and best of luck using Google Sites, the new one.